Hello, my name is Kyungja Lee from Hanmam Church in Chuncheon. I have two children, but I gave birth to my second child with my heart. I experienced many trials as I raised my adopted child, but they were all resolved after I met the risen Jesus. I'd like to share my story with you. I got married at 30, which was considered late at the time. My husband was the youngest in his family, so I didn't think his mother would live with us, but then he suggested taking care of her. I got along well with older people, so I thought having her live with us wouldn't be too difficult. That's how I agreed to live with my mother-in-law. But she was very different from the people I had met before. She had lived alone ever since she was 32 years old. She always had a frown on her face because she felt ill all the time. And she was always filled with anger. I could handle being poor, but I couldn't handle my mother-in-law being angry all the time. But I had a problem worse than that. That was my husband's drinking. Even though he was normally a kind and introverted person, whenever he drank, he was out of control. I had grown up living a textbook perfect life, so when I saw my husband acting like this, I came to regret getting married. I was seething inside. I didn't think I could go on with married life in this way, so I was set on getting a divorce. Around that time was when my first child turned one year old. But when I mentioned divorce, my husband gave me an unexpected proposal. He said, let's try going to church. If I go there, maybe I can quit drinking. And if I can't, then we can get a divorce. So I closed my eyes and took a leap. And starting from the very first day, my husband really liked going to church. And on the next day, he began attending morning prayer service too. Then as he went to church, he really did stop drinking. When he changed like this, I was sure that God really existed. From that time on, giving tithes was a given, and I faithfully attended every worship service and worked hard at every task that the church gave me. I thought that if I did these things, God would be pleased with me. One day I was reading the Bible, and I came across a verse that said, God feels compassion for the orphans and the widows. Because I had given birth at a later age, babies were so precious to me. So I asked my husband if we should adopt a child, and he also thought it was a good idea. We decided to adopt, but it took a long time for us to actually adopt a child. I wanted to adopt, but in my heart, I was not sure if I'd really be able to have an unchanging love for the child. Two years passed by, and my first child was in middle school. I thought I wouldn't be able to keep my promise to God if I kept on like this. So one day, I just went to the adoption agency and adopted a healthy two-year-old little girl. It wasn't until later that I realized she and my first child had a 12-year age gap. On the first day I brought her home, my new baby must have been frightened by the new environment because she cried the whole time and wouldn't eat anything. I had prepared a pretty blanket for her, but even though it got later and later, she couldn't go to sleep. She was trembling with fear and looking up at the ceiling. I was holding the trembling little girl in my arms, and in my heart I was saying to her, I promise that I'll be a really good mom for you. Then I prayed to God, please. Let me be able to love this child forever and raise her up to be a truly precious person. God faithfully answered this prayer. Our new daughter was very regular in her daily schedule and very neat and tidy. At 7 a.m. I would wake her up and she wouldn't whine at all. She would neatly make her bed and then wait at the kitchen table for breakfast. This was when she was two years old. <laughs> I was often the one who was flustered because I wasn't able to prepare breakfast on time. <laughs> she practically needed lessons on how to break rules. And she didn't like unfamiliar things, so she couldn't go anywhere without me. At that time, I was serving in the choir at church. So I had her in one arm and held my music with the other hand. When she turned five, 
There was a time when I had to go on a trip to another city for two days. It was a very important meeting, so I couldn't bring her along. I had no other choice, so I left her at home with my mother-in-law. But I was so worried about her. I asked my mother-in-law to take care of her and then left for work. But when I returned home, my daughter came running to me in tears. She told me not to leave her alone anymore. She said grandma is so scary. When I'd been away, my mother-in-law had said to her, if you don't obey me, I'll get rid of you without your mom knowing. Then my daughter said, it was so scary because if grandma really did throw me away, I wouldn't be able to find my way back home. My heart broke when I heard her say this. Since we adopted our daughter when she was two years old, I had let her know from the beginning that I hadn't given birth to her, but that I had adopted her. And just as I had prayed, God poured into my heart a love for her that was no different from my love for my son. And actually, because she was a girl, she seemed lovelier than my son, and I brought her up with great care. Then one day she asked me, why couldn't my real mom raise me? So I said, she couldn't raise you because she was too young. She couldn't even get married yet. Then she said, I want to see my real mom. I thought she might really miss her birth mother, so I felt bad. I was worried that she may carry with her this pain of missing her birth mother her whole life and I wondered what I could possibly do to embrace her aching heart. Even later on, I continued to have conflicts with my mother-in-law over big and small things. When my daughter grew out of her clothes and I bought her new ones, my mother-in-law said, she already has clothes, why are you buying her new ones? Also, my mother-in-law kept her valuable things in a private place that only she knew about. But when she couldn't find them, she always pinned me or my little girl as the suspects. I was concerned about how my little girl would be able to grow up healthily in the midst of these constant conflicts with my mother-in-law. I couldn't see God, but I was so thankful to him for making my husband quit drinking. So I tried my best to live according to the word. But no matter how hard I tried, the thing I could not do was love my mother-in-law. I tried fasting and did whatever I could, but whenever she hurt my little girl, I couldn't love her. No matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't. I cried because I was unable to live by the word of God. So I begged God to just take me instead. My son had been going to college in Chuncheon and attending Hanmam Church. So that year, he recommended that I go to the summer retreat there. There were many young people at the church, and during the first sermon, the pastor preached about something very basic, the resurrection. I didn't really pay attention because I already knew that topic. The young people there were furiously taking notes, but I thought there was no use in writing down what I already knew. But during the next sermon, and the one after, he continued to preach about the resurrection with great earnestness. It was like there was something he really wanted us to know, and I wondered what it was. Then he had us read a verse from Matthew chapter 7. It said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. When I heard this verse, I was able to see that I had no relationship with Jesus, even though I tried to live as the Bible says. It was clear to me that on the last day, Jesus would be saying he didn't know me. I was filled with fear. I shouted out to God, begging him to save me. I cried out to him, asking what I could do in order for Jesus to say he knows me and in order to have a relationship with him. Then the pastor told us about the confession that Thomas had after meeting the risen Jesus. Thomas met Jesus and said, My Lord and my God. He confessed that Jesus was his Lord and God, 
And just like Thomas, the Holy Spirit also led me to stand in front of the risen Jesus and confess that he is my Lord and my God. The risen Jesus truly was God. He was the God who created me. Amen. How could God have really come to this world? I knew he had made a promise about it, but it was still too shocking to think that God had really come to this world as a man. It was so incredible to believe. The pastor was right when he said that Jesus' resurrection was the greatest event that had ever happened in this world, that it was even greater than the creation. I had said I believed the Bible, so I had tried to live according to God's word. But the truth was that I hadn't believed in either God or the Bible. I had actually been believing only in an illusion that I had kept in my mind. When I realized through the resurrection that Jesus is my Lord and God, all the burdens that oppressed me were gone. Amen. And all of the doubts in me and everything I couldn't understand in the Bible were completely resolved. The cross had always been burdensome in my mind. I had never been able to understand what it had to do with me, but that cross was the place where God himself had died. Because of the risen Jesus, I could see how scary sin was when I looked at the cross. And when I stood in front of the risen Lord, I could clearly see the sin that carries people to hell. I don't really use words that might be considered unpleasant, and one of the words I considered unpleasant was hell. This is because I thought that when you use a word like hell, people may feel threatened or judged, so I simply didn't use it. But after meeting the risen Jesus, I came to know just how scary sin really is. Because of the sins I committed, the Creator who made me had to die. I had sinned against God, and I had wanted to be God myself. But to save someone like me, God had sent His Son to this earth, and this Son had died and risen again to become my Lord. And so that anyone would be able to believe, He had fulfilled the Scriptures and risen from the dead, and even now, He was ruling over me. Not believing in him as Lord was truly a scary and wicked sin worthy of hell. I said, what should I do, God? What should I do? I kept crying and saying this. Even though Jesus was my Lord, the owner of my life, and the Lord of both my daughter and my mother-in-law, I had been my own Lord and was deceived into thinking that my daughter's happiness was all in my hands so I couldn't help but worry about her and suffer with anxiety. I repented the sin of not believing in the risen Jesus, and I accepted him as my Lord. Amen. After accepting Jesus, all of the problems in my life that made me worry and have a hard time were all resolved. The hardest thing for me had been trying to love my mother-in-law. I had tried as best as I could to love and forgive her. But after I received the risen Jesus as my Lord, I was no longer a person who hated or a person who couldn't forgive. I had already become someone who could love my enemies. Amen. And because of the resurrection, all of the worries that I had about my daughter ended at once. Amen. After meeting the risen Jesus, I saw that God was our real Father, and my eyes were open to the fact that through the blood of Jesus, the church body was truly the eternal family. And through the risen Jesus, my daughter also realized she had an eternal family. So there was no reason for me to worry anymore. Because I had become a mother to her later in life, I worried about who would take care of my daughter if I were to die. But I don't worry about that anymore. That's because we have our eternal family with us. My daughter is growing up, and in Jesus, she is always joyful and confident. She's really good at sports, so she always gets medals at competitions. Also, she easily makes friends with other kids. Once there was an exam at her school that measured self-esteem, and the score for her self-esteem was 100%. <laughs> I was a little surprised at first, but then I realized that such a result really made sense for her. She's in eighth grade now, 
in her terrible teens. <laughs> Many people think adolescents are the toughest to raise, but because my daughter is always with Jesus, she's full of joy and vitality. I gave birth to my second child with my heart, and in Jesus, we are forever a true family. I am forever her true mother. Amen. And just as I had prayed for her, she is regarded as precious and loved, both at home and outside the home. These days when my mother-in-law goes out, she buys snacks and drinks for our daughter, and she always brags about her granddaughter to our neighbors. Also, my son, who's 12 years older than her, is like a reliable bodyguard for his little sister. And her father's ready to do whatever she asks for. It's like she's got him in the palm of her hand. <laughs> most importantly, the risen Jesus is her Lord. So she has really become the most precious person in the world. I am so thankful to God for giving me such a precious daughter and for giving me, through the gospel, the church community that will be with us forever. For the rest of my life, I will do my best to please this Lord of mine. Thank you.